Hey, Shalom YouTube, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video and share something that's kind of been on my heart lately. I've been thinking a lot about why the Messianic movement is not more influential and it's not growing as quickly as I, I believe we could be growing. And uh, let me first say that I believe that this movement is a spirit-led movement. I believe that uh, it's a good thing to be emphasizing that faith practice of Yeshua, Jesus, and the apostles. Going back to the Sabbath, that, that is a good thing, that God wants us to rest on the seventh day, that observing the feast days like Passover and Sukkot, that this is something that the Lord is empowering, that, that is uh, inspired of the Lord, that this is a move, movement, a move of God. And so if that's the case, then why aren't we growing as quickly as we could be? There's a couple things that, that the Lord has been kind of putting on my mind as I've been thinking about that. And uh, really the main problem that the Lord has revealed to me is uh, us. It's the same problem that it always is. It's that mankind, uh, that we are taking something good, a good thing that God has given us, and we have abused it and, and misused it. And, um, you know, I look at an, another movement of God in the body, and, and I believe that there's a parallel here, but I look at the charismatic movement, which I do believe is, is a move of God. I believe that it's a good thing to be emphasizing the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that worship and that intimacy with God. I, I believe that that is a good thing. And yet, you look at this movement, and so often there is abuse. There are abuses of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. People, they, they uh, you know, say that they have the gift of prophecy, and, and maybe, you know, they do in some elements, but they abuse that spiritual authority that, that people give to them, and they manipulate people for their own gain, and they exploit people uh, for money and to build their own kingdoms. And so in the Messianic movement, I think that there are uh, abuses as well. I think that the Torah, which is a good thing that God has given us, is being abused and misused. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of people, I think, are not keeping the Sabbath and the feast days and the dietary instructions out of a genuine love for God. They are not doing it out of genuine faith and love for God. They're doing it for self-righteous reasons. They are abusing and misusing the Torah uh, to feel better than everyone else. They want to be able to look at other Christians and be, oh, look at me, look at how cool, and look at how different I am, and look at how much more holy I am than these regular Christians who, oh my gosh, gasp, they eat bacon, they celebrate Christmas, oh my, they're pagans, and God has revealed these special things to me, and, and I'm part of this remnant, I'm part of these this holy people, and, and I'm separate and, and more important than those regular Christians, and I believe that this kind of attitude is, is not of the Father, and it's hindering the work that the Father is doing. Uh, it, is, it is something that a friend of mine calls, it's not special enough syndrome. People, they, they don't feel special enough just being Christians, so they keep the Torah, which is a good thing, they take the Sabbath, which is a good thing, but they use it in a not good way for self-righteous re self -righteous reasons to make themselves appear more holy and uh, or whatever, more religious than other people. They use these things as an attempt to to appear better and more knowledgeable than regular Christians who are focused on silly things like loving their neighbor as themselves and taking care of the poor and, and you know, things like that Yeshua told us are the most important things. Uh, but anyway, you know, th those things are put on the back burner because, hey, we got the Sabbath now. So this brings me to another point, which is my main point, really, and that is something that is different with the charismatic movement. Uh, so we have some similarities with them, but one way that we're different is that the messianic movement has uh, 
kind of set itself up as um, an opposition to Christianity. So the charismatic movement, you know, despite all of its problems, despite all of the, the wackiness that they have, uh, they're still growing significantly. They still have a lot of influence. And that's because they are a movement within Christianity, whereas messianic you know, the Messianic movement, we've kind of set, of our, set ourselves up as a movement opposed to Christianity. And that is a huge mistake. The reason why it's a mistake is, number one, because Messianics are Christians. We are Christians. Whether you like it or not, if you've received Yeshua, Jesus, as your Savior, you are a Christian. That's what the word means, a follower of Christ. And so we shouldn't be separating ourselves with Christians who haven't yet, you know, started keeping the Sabbath and the feast days yet. And, and, you know, I know those things are important. Yes, Sabbath is important. Keeping, resting on the seventh day, that's important. Keeping the feast days, those are important. But some Messianics, they're rejecting their Christian brothers over these issues and yet flocking to Judaism and flocking to the rabbis. They won't listen to C.S. Lewis or Charles Spurgeon or, or modern uh, pastors, godly men like John Piper, they won't listen to people like them anymore over issues like the Sabbath, yet they'll listen to Rashi and Rambam and modern day folks like Nehemia Gordon, all these people that don't believe in Yeshua. Uh, and, and you kind of got to ask yourself like, all right, what's the bigger error here? What's the bigger error? Is not keeping the Sabbath on the right day, is that a bigger error than rejecting Yeshua? And if the answer to that question is not completely obvious to you, then you need to get right with the Lord. You need to repent because the obvious answer is that rejecting Yeshua is the bigger error. So we need to get our priorities straight. So two things. Number one, we need to get over, if we really want this movement of, of God that we are passionate about, that we love, that, that we want to see flourish and be successful for the sake of the glory of God, if that is truly what we desire, there's two things. Number one, we need to get over our self-righteousness. And number two, we need to unite with our Christian brothers uh, and stop seeing ourselves as something that is opposed to Christianity. And once we do those two things, I believe that that is when this movement of God will really flourish because we'll be taking ourselves out of the way and working alongside with the Spirit to really make a difference in this world. So, Anyway, that's my thought. Hope you guys are edified by that. What do you think? Feel free, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Would love to know your guys' thoughts, but that's all I have for you guys today. All right, have a great day. Shalom.